Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in, in him. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Thy feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all of the earth keep silence before him. My father's children, what a day, what a day, what a day to be in the house of the Lord on a day such as this. We're going to follow the outline of our program. We, we pray that everyone has one. Uh, we're going to be favored now with a selection by Sister Mary Moffitt, a musician from the Terrell Creek Missionary Baptist Church. Then Pastor Ned Thorpe is going to come with our scripture and our invocation. Uh, Reverend Thorpe is a pastor of the First Missionary Baptist Church in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. Then our host pastor, uh, Dr. Clarence Burke, is going to come and extend to us a welcome and a purpose. Amen. Amen. you this afternoon in the matchless, powerful name of that name that's above every name. The name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Our scriptures this afternoon will be read from Matthew 28, 16 through 20, King James translation. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Word of God for all of God's people. Let every heart pray. 
through many dangerous toils and snares. I have already come. Grace brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, so again we come before you, God, to glorify and magnify and worship your holy and righteous name. God, we're going to praise you this evening. Even in the midst of this activity, God, you're going to get the glory and the honor. God, we thank you for what you're doing right now. And God, what your servant will go forth from this place and do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. And amen. Good afternoon. We welcome you to Beacon Light Missionary Baptist Church. It is our pleasure and our honor to host the ordination service for these two very worthy individuals, Minister Graham and Minister Phillips. That's the purpose that we're here today. Um, this is something that has been in the works for quite a while. They both passed their catechism test before the pandemic, but we delayed their ordination until it was safe together again. We didn't think it would take this long, but we are so happy for their patience, for their endurance with us as pastors to allow us to wait for a time when it would be safer to have this. So we. Thank you. We thank you, Mr. Graham. We thank you, Minister Phillips, for your patience. Uh, and we just thank you for your families who have come out and church families who have come out to support them today. Um, just some housekeeping. The bathrooms are right outside the door to your um, right as you go out. Uh, we do appreciate you keeping your mask on unless you're speaking from up here. We're trying to keep everybody as safe as possible. So thank you. Thank you very much for helping us to keep everybody safe. As one, you also see the offering on the program. And one thing we do here at Beacon Light, we are not lifting offering right now because that's another opportunity for movement that we're trying to keep down. So what we're doing is we're putting baskets outside. So at the end of service, if you want to give an offering, you can put it in the basket outside as you leave. Also, as you leave, the ushers will um, guide you out row by row. Uh, another time to try and keep you safe, try to keep you safe. So after the service, if you could please wait and not rush out, but allow the ushers to let you out row by row, and the baskets will be out there if you desire to um, give an offering. But again, thank you. I thank our moderator, Pastor Armstead, Pastor Lindsay, who's here, Atkins, who's here. Just thank all of you for coming out to um, worship with us today as we celebrate the ordination of these two worthy individuals. You know, I told you it's been delayed, but it has not been denied. So this is the day. God bless you. <laughs> you. We thank you, Pastor Burke, for that welcome and for just guiding us as we need guidance where it relates to your offering which actually speeds the service up just a little bit because now we're already down to the introduction of our preacher. Amen. Amen. I, I do count it an honor and a privilege this, this afternoon to be able to introduce to some and present to others our preacher for this auspicious occasion. The Reverend Lindsay B. Atkins III. A bond servant of Jesus Christ since 1990. He is happily married to the former Mrs. Marva J. Fan since October of 1986. To this union, three children, Amanda, Ebony, and Lindsay IV, has four granddaughters, uh, Gianna, Samantha, Sabina, and Anel. Some of his professional highlights include uh, that certainly of the pastoral ship of the Lincoln Memorial Missionary Baptist Church right here in Durham since the year of August 2002. He is a certified veteran service officer for the Durham County government, 
Uh, he's been in that position since 2015. Reverend Atkins has served as a sergeant in the United States Marine Corps from 1985 to 1993 with tours in the, the uh, Persian Gulf Wars, Desert Shield, Desert Storm. Some of his educational highlights include uh, graduate Shaw University, a BA in religion and philosophy, summa cum laude. Some of his awards include volunteer of the year for the Triangle United Way, North Carolina Governor's Award for Outstanding Chamber Representative, Naval of Achievement Medal for Outstanding Military Service, and some of his community involvement during partnership with children, Operation Breakthrough, American Legion Post Number 7, a Durham in Poverty Now group, Triangle United Way, Durham Juvenile Crime Prevention Council, uh, UDI Community Development Corporation Board, Durham Volunteer Center Board, uh, uh, Interfaith Hospitality Network, DPS Closing the Achievement Gap Task Force, Partners for the Youth, Junior Leadership of Durham Incorporated, Leadership of Durham Graduate, and Durham Community College Inaugural Class Graduate. I, I, I introduced to some this afternoon, uh, Pastor Lindsey B. Atkins III, as our speaker, we pray that you pray with him, pray for him. But before I sit down, I want to also say that he is our, our uh, vice chair of our ordaining council, and today is his birthday, and he thought it not robbery. Hey, man, he thought it not robbery to step away from his family and, and, and friends and, and, and come and, and bless us real good today. So, Pastor Atkins, we thank you for just being such a wonderful blessing to, to us, our, our fellowships, and to these two young ladies who have uh, prepared their hearts to serve God through ministry, and we just ask that you just give them and us that encouraging word that we need that we might all stay on this battlefield for the Lord. God bless you to the congregation, Reverend Atkins, Reverend Atkins, the congregation. Following another selection by our minister of music, the next voice you will hear will be that of our speaker. May God bless each of you.
Amen. We thank God for the blood. Amen. Amen. That, that soul cleansing blood. Yes. Certainly want to bless God on today and say how grateful I am to have this opportunity to stand at this sacred desk uh, to be a part of this ordination service. I, I'm glad the blood not just reaches to the highest mountain where he may find some of you, but I'm glad it flows to the lowest <laughs> valley. See, I'm one of those that came from the guttermost. Some of y'all might have come from the uttermost, but I'm so glad. Am I in the right place? I'm so glad that the blood, <laughs> I'm glad it flows. Thank God for gravity that it flows down in the valley. I, I want to let you know that uh, the pandemic has had me hemmed up at Lincoln Memorial for the past year or so, so I'm happy to be out. I can't tell you how long we're going to be here because I'm just happy to be out. Uh, amen. But we bless God. <laughs> we bless God on today. Will you pray with me? Blessed Savior, strong tower, deliverer, the God of us all, whether we agree or not, in love with us all, whether we know it or not. You who do the calling and the ordaining, it is to you we bend, we bow, we present ourselves. Grateful for Beacon Light. Grateful for Mount Moriah. Grateful for servants, God, that you are still calling into the vineyard, sending out into the hedges and the highways, and we're grateful, God, for our space in this place, but more importantly, for your place in our hearts and in our minds. God, you know better than we the true purpose for our gathering. God, let us be in alignment with your will, your word, and your way. Always move me out of the way. These are dying people, not minds. You know what they need better than I know how to ask. I just present my body a living sacrifice God, make it holy and acceptable unto you that I might be your reasonable service. Consecrate us all to thine service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let each of our souls look up with a steadfast hope and our wills be lost in thine. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. and amen. We certainly again bless God, thank God for Dr. Burke and his um, generosity and allow me to stand and be a part of this um, service to our moderator for his leadership for these years both in the kingdom but also over this new hope missionary uh, association our pulpit guests to all the pastors and preachers out here and to our honorees these who will be ordained later on this afternoon uh, to my mentor i I know he has a lot of mentees, but to my mentor, who I got to hang out at Shaw University over that first Antioch, uh, doing all kinds of stuff. I didn't know um, that school could be so much fun, but Dr. Lafayette Maxwell had a way of challenging you in a way that you never thought. And I, I to the extent that I'm, I'm halfway a preacher, I, I want to thank him. And certainly my pastor, who's in retirement, Reverend W.E. Day. Uh, I, I realized that I wasn't your number one, your first choice, because I told you I'm down in the lowest valley. The Reverend Dr. Mark Roster probably should have been here. He is our catechizer. He is indeed the chair of our ordaining council where I serve, and some of my colleagues are here. Well, we get to serve the New Hope Association churches uh, by doing what we believe God has called us to do by examining the candidates uh, that come into the New Hope Association, not just as licentiates, but those who believe that God has called them even higher, or should I say deeper, into this ordained ministry. And so we are grateful for that opportunity. It is a, uh, a duty that we do not take lightly. Uh, I tell Lincoln all the time, I got enough to answer for myself. Amen. I'm glad. I tell them, these are God's people. I'm like Moses. These are your people you brought out of Egypt. God tried to give them to Moses. Moses said, no, these are your people. I got enough to answer. So I, I don't want to have to answer for ordaining or catechizing ministers, too, that don't have that particular calling or 
demonstration on their lives. And really, it, it is for their good that they are not uh, misled into believing that anybody can do. Anybody is qualified to some degree, uh, but we need to not go into this ministry lightly. Um, thank you for your patience. Today is my birthday. I'm 56 years young. Or old, it don't matter. I'll take 56 however I can get it. Amen. And last year on my birthday, I was doing a eulogy for my cousin, first cousin. She died uh, way too early. The previous year, 2019, on my birthday, I was doing a eulogy for my uncle, the baby brother, my mom. There were 11 of them, and the baby brother, he died suddenly. He was a preacher, too, a great man. And I'm doing their, their eulogy. So I'm glad today that this is not a eulogy. I'm not <laughs> preaching anybody's funeral. But more importantly, moderator, I'm glad that it's not my funeral that's been. But you know, whether to live or to die, I don't, it doesn't matter if it was mine or not. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't care. But, but I'm just glad to be amongst the living there's a word from the Lord. I want to take my text from the book of Lamentations, which is a very interesting book. Its authorship is conflicting. Most ascribe it to Jeremiah, but we won't go into that as to whether he's the true author or not. As soon as the moderator called me to told, tell me that my assignment today will be to preach at this ordination service, immediately God dropped two words into my spirit. Uh, now what? or what now, however you want to look at it. And parenthetically, I want to say, once you can answer that question, now what? Parenthetically, I want to suggest that you wait for it. Whatever that now what or what now is, learn how to wait for it. Whatever it might be, learn. That's to, that we, we, we spend more time laying before God in prayer and study than we actually do in the service of God. That should be the lot in the role of a preacher man or a preacher woman, in my estimation and opinion. I want to share this, these particular passages from two different versions, uh, translations of the Bible. I want to read it to you first from the King James Version. I'm trying to be a little high tech. I'm not as high tech as Dr. Burke, but I, 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 I'm tired of killing trees, so I'm, I'm trying to coming to the modern era. It reads like this from the King James, Lamentations, the third chapter, verse 19 through 26. Remembering mine affliction and my misery, the warm wood and the gall, my soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. He says, this I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. Say, wait for it. I love this passage. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassion fell not. They are new every morning. <laughs> Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, said my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Say, wait for it. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him him to the soul that seeketh him it is good that a man should both hope and quietly I like that word quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord I did the message Bible I just stumbled upon the message Bible I was listening to a preacher and and I tried to do some research on these different translations and I, I, I've taken a somewhat of a liking to it because it tries to put uh, Hebrew and Greek um, text into everyday uh, terms, but every day back in that day. All right, and, and so it, it, it's it's if you are a King James lover like I am, but you don't know how to break up with King James, you might have trouble with this translation. Because one time I wouldn't preach from anything but King James, and didn't care for preachers who preached from anything other than King James. But Lindsay is growing by grace. And so the same passage, but from the message Bible says, I'll never forget the trouble, the utter lostness, the taste of ashes, the poison I've swallowed. I, I remember it all, says the writer. Oh, how well I remember the feeling of hitting the bottom. But there's one, but there's one other thing I remember. And remembering, I keep a grip on hope. 
He says God's loyal love couldn't have run out. His merciful love couldn't have dried up. They're created new every morning. How great your faithfulness. He said, I'm sticking with God. I say it over and over. He, he's all I've got left. God proves to be good to the man who passionately waits, to the woman who diligently seeks. He said, it is a good thing to quietly hope, quietly hope for help from God. That's the message. Bible. Now what? Now what? What now? This preaching business is not for the faint at heart uh, or those who are prone to weak stomachs, minds, and knees, spiritually speaking. Uh, unless that weakness is to show forth God's strength. You remember Paul complained about the thorn in his flesh, but once he got a revelation that it was good for him, he said, I glory in tribulation for when I'm weak, then am I strong. Once he understood while it was there, he had to wait because he said three times I prayed. But now that I understand why I keep feeling this way, bring it on. Because I know now I got a different mindset and perspective. So unless in you, your weakness can show forth God's strength, preaching might not be what you want to continue in. It's not too late to say wait. There's a difference between preaching long and preaching strong. But Pope don't like long winded preachers anymore. Like they, like see, it's not the length of the preaching, but the strength of the preaching that reflects God's enabling power and anointing because the anointing still destroys the yoke. Talking to these preachers. Now, if y'all want to listen in, uh, uh, go ahead. What am I trying to say? I, I, preaching is in an art form, and, and I'm so careful sometimes to make sure I don't lean too far to the left or right into that realm of entertaining the people of God by the preaching of God's word because this, 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 this good news uh, it can feel good sometimes to the flesh especially when folks say amen and preachers can that's why this pandemic has helped us to make sure that we're not preaching to the people necessarily what we got to hear an amen it's sometimes it's just good to preach to the lights and say amen lights and hope they keep coming on. But, but so we, I, 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 and, Doc, and, and Dr. King, I remember he talked about it as I study and listen to him how important it is that preaching does not just um, be relegated to an art form that people who have itching ears just want to hear a good word. They come in this way and go out the same way. That's not, that's not. But preaching is a tool. It's an instrument. Uh, a, a sometimes seemingly foolish to device uh, that's anointed and ordained by God to present this great saving gospel of Jesus Christ. First Corinthians one twenty one says, "For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them yeah. that believe." Romans 1 and 16, the apostle teaches us and says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first, but also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed, for the just shall live by what? I'm in the right house. I'm going somewhere with this. However, the apostle Paul teaches us in Philippians 1, 15 through 18, and this is important for preaching. He says, some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife. Some also of goodwill. The one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds, he said. This is just how he felt. But the other of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. He said, what then? Notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And therein do... I rejoice, yea, and will rejoice that the word of God will be preached. He will not be without a representative. But for me, preaching and ordained ministry can be summed up in one word, wait, or waiting. Humanity seems to constantly struggle with our inability to wait. We're some 
but I'm not talking to you. You can say amen, but we, we are some impatient folk. Anytime I get on the highway, somebody's always pushing me. I don't know where they're going. I, I saw a bumper sticker that said, I bet you don't follow Jesus this close. <laughs> always in a hurry and nowhere to go. We have this we, we struggle with our inability to wait, let alone patiently wait with silent surrendering for anything and anyone, especially the Lord God, our creator. We don't like waiting on God, but you can't hurry God. Ah, all right, all right. You can't even hurry me when I'm trying to do God's work. Now what? Now what? In Christ or out of Christ, this seems to be the world in and around us. It's either now what or what now. Good, bad, or indifference. Now what or what now. I believe the response for kingdom kids, children of the most high God, especially the preacher man and woman. Now what is wait. Learn how to wait for it. Now to be clear, we preachers, the licentiate, the jack leg, the anointed, the appointed, and the ordained. Huh? Every one of us was a jack leg before we stopped and realized that God can't even teach Sunday school without preaching. Can't even get up here to do a prayer without preaching in the prayer. Jack legs. But we got our credentials. Come on now. Now, I'm from Georgia. Now, jack leg might mean one thing to me there. I don't know what it means to you. All right, but it's not an insult. <laughs> we preachers are frontline wait, W A I T, staff. We don't give the orders, we take the orders and serve as ordered. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pulpit hitter, and this is glass, and I, I, don't, I know it's good tempered glass, but I don't, I don't want to hurt myself trying to. I just feel like hitting something sometimes. We take orders and serve as ordered. Ours, all of us now, but preachers especially, ours is to wait. Wait how patiently, wait how expectantly, wait how with gratitude for the one we are waiting on. Wait how with humility, wait how in faith, in hope, and in love, out of love, for love. That's how we wait. The love of God and the love of our neighbors as we love ourselves. I, 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 I haven't been able to go eat in because we've been eating out a lot. And, um, and, and in order to be supporting of the industry, we still try to tip as though we were in. But, you know, sometimes the tips are predicated on the service. And uh, sometimes, though, the service just ain't good even if the food is. And these folk that are waiting on you at your table, they don't just come to your table and put up a chair and just sit there. Amen? And if you're not ready, they shouldn't get an attitude because you're not ready. They should just walk on off. And when you are ready, they should not act like they don't see you because you weren't ready when they were ready. I wish somebody could hear me tonight. Well, preach, we don't get the pick and choose when we serve, where we serve, how we serve, or whom we serve. We just wait to serve. The hardest task, fleshly speaking, but the easiest task for me, spiritually speaking, is waiting to be of service for the kingdom of our God in Christ Jesus. I'm hurried. The early preachers almost lost their way waiting on tables, which was important, instead of waiting on the Lord, which was the most important. Uh, but I'm so glad Peter realized that as much as we need to help these widows who are grumbling and mumbling, uh, we find ourselves serving them and we don't have time to study the word of God. We don't have time to labor for God in prayer. Let's choose out seven men so that they can take over this weight stuff. And we're going to give ourselves over. If you're going to preach, you've got to learn how to lay before God in prayer and in the study. And not just study to preach, but sometimes you just got to study just for yourself. I'm trying too hard. I'm trying too hard. 
Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I, I'm trying to get you there. Wait for it. Wait for it. Romans 8, 18. Paul says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. <sighs> Come on, I know we got COVID fatigue, but y'all got, we got to keep, we almost out of this thing. We've taken a couple of steps back because some folk, all of a sudden now, they, in a way, I, die, I don't want to die. For, for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Say hope. We're going to get out of here. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Kingdom kids. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Watch this now. Wait for it. And not only they, but we ourselves, uh, which have the first fruit of the Spirit, we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of our body. Wait for it. For we are saved by what? Hope. But hope that is seen is not hope for what a man said. Why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patient wait for it. Let me introduce the text. Let's just go with Jeremiah as the author, as this preacher of hope. He was in the throes of that powerful truth found in Proverbs 13, 12 through 14 that says, Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Beloved, in times like these, we kingdom kids, children of the most high God, must keep hope alive and keep on preaching like we believe so that we can behave like we believe. Jeremiah is in a now what or a what now situation. And like Daniel in the lion's den or the den of lions, he is teaching us how to wait for it. Watch this. Watch this and I'm done. Lamentation, third chapter, as, as it begins. I want to present this to you from the Message Bible. The Bible can preach itself. I'm going to get out of its way in a minute. He says, I'm the man who has seen trouble. <sighs> trouble coming from the lash of God's anger. He took me by the hand and walked me into pitch black darkness. Yes, he's given, listen at this lamenting. Yes, he's given me the back of his hand over and over and over again. Again, message Bible. He turned me into a skeleton of skin and bones, then broke the bones. Talk about dire straight. He hemmed me in, ganged up on me, poured on the trouble and hard time. He locked me up in deep darkness like a corpse nailed inside a coffin. Let me just say this here. What I love about the, the writer, whoever he or she may be, is that they, that they realize that whatever their calamity, that whatever their trouble, or whatever their situation, it wasn't because of the devil. It wasn't because of man. God was the one allowing it to happen. Even Job knew that. Uh, he never blamed anybody. He said, if I could just talk to God. But we just turn on one another. Ah. Now what? He, he, listen, to, listen to what he said. He said, he shuts me in so I never get out. Talking about God. Handcuffs my wrist. Shackles my feet. Even when I cry out and plead for help, he locks up my prayers and throws away the key. That's how he felt then. Nobody knows the trouble. He, he sets up blockades with quarrel limestone. He's got me cornered. He's a prowling bear tracking me down, a lion in hiding, ready to pounce. He knocked me from the path and ripped me into pieces. Ooh. When he finished, and he ain't finished, there was nothing left of me. God has to break us down so he can build us. I wish I had time. He took out his bow and arrows and used me for target practice. I don't know, but see, you got to understand, Jerusalem that great city of God 
that impenetrable and just thought that they would never be conquered by all of a sudden Jerusalem is in ruin you got to read it for yourself and he's lamenting the death of a city this is the funeral and the eulogy he shot me in the stomach with arrows from his quiver everyone took me for a joke made me the butt of their mocking ballads. He forced rotten, stinking food down my throat. This is Bible, y'all. This is the message. Bloated me with vile drinks. He ground my face into the gravel. He pounded me into the mud. He said, I gave up on life altogether. I've forgotten what the good life is like. I said to myself, this is it. I'm finished. God is a lost cause. Now what? What now? Come on, somebody. Now wait for it. Watch this. This section is entitled, In a Good, in a good Thing to Hope. It's a good thing to hope for help from God. I'm trying to help preachers now as they get ready to be ordained. I, I, he says, I'll never forget the trouble, the utter lostness, the taste of ashes, the poison I've swallowed. He said, I remember it all. Oh, how well I remember the feeling of hitting the bottom. But he said, but that's one other thing I remember. Come on, preacher. He said, and remember, I keep a grip on hope. He says, God's loyal love could not have run out. It's inexhaustible. His merciful love could not have dried up. They are created new every morning. How great your faithfulness. So he said, I'm sticking with God. He's all I've got left. He's all you had in the first place. God proves to be a good, God proves to be good to the man who passionately waits, to the woman who diligently seeks. It is a good thing to quietly hope, to quietly hope for the help from God. It is a good thing when you're young to stick it out through the hard times, when, when life is heavy and hard to take. Go off by yourself, preachers. Enter the silence. Bow in prayer. Don't ask questions. Wait for hope to appear. Don't run from trouble. Take it full face. Uh, the worst is never the worst. Uh, and things are never so bad that they couldn't be worse. Why? He says because the master won't ever walk out and fail to return. Watch that now. He didn't say he won't walk out. But he'll be back. His hands are stretched out. He said, I'm married to the backsliders. I know I got the, I'm hurrying, y'all. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. <sighs> he, if he works severely, he also works tenderly. His stockpiles of loyal love are immense. I'm still in, in, in Lamentations, the third chapter. He takes no pleasure in making life hard and throwing roadblocks in the way. But here's the rub. Here's the challenge for some of us. We grow weary in waiting because of the now what's in life. And in so doing, we find ourselves not ready when the call comes and orders need to be filled. Not only do we need to get ready, we need to stay ready so we can be ready. Preachers, come on now. As preachers, we peddle in hope. Yes, we do. COVID-19 is a new name to an old problem that on a spiritual level can represent sin. Uh, we need to cry like John the Baptist, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I wish I had time. I don't have time. I, 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 Isaiah, I love Isaiah, I, but I love all of God's holy writ. But Isaiah 40 asks a powerful question. He says, has thou not known, I'm hurrying, getting ready to go to my seat. Has thou not heard? That the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither is weary. I love this. He said there's no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait on the Lord, they that hope in the Lord. Though they, they that keep waiting on the Lord, they that keep hoping in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. How and why? Because they learn how to wait on the Lord. It doesn't matter what now. It doesn't matter now what. They've learned how to wait on the Lord. Beloved, you're about to be ordained. Now what? 
You're going to get a new title, no more minister, but reverend before your last name. Now what? I want you to wait for it. Peter, James, and John, along with the other disciples, to find themselves in a now what situation that was even more dire than that of Jeremiah or the writers of Lamentation. From the upper room to the borrowed tomb, hope was deferred, making their hearts sick. And when Jesus got arrested, they did not know what to do. You remember Peter on the other day who had great hope. Uh, his hope was built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. When Jesus was with him, but when they uh, uh, arrested Jesus, uh, when he tried to help Jesus by fighting back and pulled out his switchblade, uh, and he was ready to fight a physical fight, but he had not yet gotten ready to fight spiritually. Jesus told him to put up your sword, for they had fight by the sword. Live by the sword, we'll die. And that rocked Peter's world. He didn't, he didn't, now what? I can't fight like I used to fight. So he had to watch them. Take, who was it beginning the word? Lock him up. Like a helpless sheep. A lamb, dumb before the slaughters. They didn't know what to do. To some degree, they were paralyzed. And they watched them from a distance. They didn't know how to wait. And we see Jesus going down that Via Della Rosa. We see him hung out on Calvary's mountain. We see him crying out, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. See, Jesus never had a now what or what now situation. He always knew who he was and whose he was and why he was. They had to wait for it. You know the story? They put him in a borrowed tomb. You know the story. On the third day, he rose with all power, but that's not how the story ends. We see him getting ready to go up to glory, to be with the Father. He says to a disciple, now I want you to go. I want you to tarry in Jerusalem, and I want you to wait for the promise of the Father. You got to wait now. I know you're going to get tired of waiting sometime. I know folk going to want to know, well, that's all you're going to do is sit in the pulpit. That's all you're going to do is Give a prayer and read a scripture. That's all you're going to do, sitting there looking this way and that way. Just wait for it. Just keep on waiting. They ain't the one that calls you. They're not the ones to anoint you. They're not the ones to appoint you. Oh, yes, I believe that's an earthly calling. But it's no good unless there's a heavenly calling. You got to wait for it. You got to work for it. You ain't got to jock against other preachers. Oh, you got to wait for it. You have been accountable. You have been assigned to a particular part in the vineyard. You are not your own. You can't just come in and go out like you want to come in and go out. I don't care if they let 10 preachers preach before you preach. You wait. And when they call you, you got to be ready. I shall never forget my time in California with my pastor. I was a young preacher. And he preach and he loved to preach and I loved to hear him preach and one day he turned to me he said you want to get this I was petrified I wasn't ready I mean I'm new but I bet you he ain't never asked me that no more <laughs> from that time on I realized that I need to be ready that's all I'm trying to say to you when you get into your now what situation and your what now wait for it wait for the one that appointed you and anointed we're going to lay hands, and that's symbolic, and that's important, conferring, but his hands. Paul said, I want to lay hands on that which has laid hands on me. Wait for that anointing. Don't take every assignment you get unless you know God wants you to go there. Amen. 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 All right. Lens is starting to show up, so I need to get out of the way. There may be somebody here today who just thought they were coming to an ordination service because they know these two fine people. But if you're here and you don't have a, a saving relationship with Jesus who is the Christ, today could be your spiritual birthday. You cannot go wrong waiting on God. So if you're here and you've never surrendered, you've never said yes, you've never been water baptized, the doors are open. Romans 10 and 9, that if thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. If you are saved and you're not in church, because if it's right to be church, in church it's wrong to be out. I tell Lincoln that a Christian out of church is like a fish out of water. That's not your natural environment. 
Will you stand? Everybody stand. I'm moving out of the way. Heads bow. Father, if there is one here under the sound of my voice that has not surrendered his or her life, or if there is one who has been water baptized but is no longer in a surrendered spirit, I pray that you help him or her right now. I pray that if they would just pray to you right now, Lord, save me and believe that they can be saved. I pray that if that one who has strayed or who is no longer, who's hurt by church so-called, and just feel that all preachers are just out for this or that and just have had a bad taste and have not tasted to see how good you are, that that person who wants to believe that you help them and strengthen their unbelief, that one who knows better but is not doing better, if they would just pray that, that spiritual washing prayer in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I pray that under the sound of my voice are kingdom kids. And if, if they're all not kingdom kids, that you will lead them, O oh God. And that you will not call them into judgment before it's everlasting too late. We bless this house. We bless the balance of this service. To the extent that lenses showed up in any way, erase it from their hearts and minds. Only allow your word to stand and stick, finding us a way in our soul that we can be like David who said, Thine word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. you pastor atkins for for such a powerful word what now now what amen let us now prepare our hearts to uh, go into the ordination service of this particular service and we're going to ask uh, dr lafayette maxwell if he will come the pastor of the mount zion missionary baptist church in wake county Come and give a charge to the candidates. Following that, we're going to have a presentation of the Bibles by Dr. Angelo Birch, Associate Minister of the New Hope Missionary Baptist Church, and presentation, presentation of the hymnals, Reverend Marie Tapp, Associate Minister of the Mount Gilead Missionary Baptist Church right here in the great city of Durham. Following that, we're going to ask all ordained ministers that we may come together, come around, that we may uh, properly lay hands on these, your candidates, O oh Lord. To my dear two sisters, I thank God for giving me an opportunity to seed into your lives as well as you seed it into mine. This is a glorious occasion because this was a time in the Baptist church, I ain't talking about nobody else, this would have never happened. But thank God for being God in his godness. Look what God has done. I charge you both, Colleen and Bev, to recognize that God didn't call you because you was the greatest nor the worst. He called you out of his divine will. He created you with all that you needed. But you, myself, and everybody in here, we marred what God had done in our life. But the good news of the gospel is that the potter will take that marred clay. He didn't go around looking for new clay and bypassed us. He took that marred clay, that dry clay, that sinful clay, and put us in his hands. And when he puts us in his hands and put us on that wheel, you have been on the wheel, not knowing that this day was going to come. Now all Christians 
ought to minister. But what's happening to you is different. You have been called to minister. That's a difference. God has, and don't let anybody tell you that you're not worthy. If he has said you're worthy, then you're worthy. Pastor Norman Davis, Homestead, I mean, at the, and the Mount Moriah Baptist Church have seen your works. And they know you was ready for this occasion. And Beacon Light, Colleen, seen your work. The pastor, and they know you was ready for this day. The New Hope Association and its catechizing committee examine you. And if it, you didn't pass, you wouldn't be here today. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And to God be the glory that you're here now. And I want to charge you to remember a few things. Remember Jesus Christ as Savior in your preaching and your teaching and your evangelism. I charge you never to step ahead of your pastor. No matter what you think you know or don't know, God has put you under their leadership. And they will let you talk to them and share some things, but don't get the big head. Follow the leadership because you would want that done for you. Now, my brothers and sisters, a glorious occasion. Preach Jesus and him crucified. Preach God as king and the Holy Spirit as sustainer in your preaching and your teaching. Now, you may say to me, won't I run out? Preaching Jesus, and I'll say, no, you will never run out. God gave me this early in ministry now, and I know it's ain't nothing new up under the sun, but I was sitting in Jacksonville, Florida, and God gave me something. You will never run out, son. So you never have to try to copy, be a carbon copy of anybody else in your teaching and your preaching. Find your authentic self. Learn from others, but... Find your authentic self. He called you to equip you for your authentic self. And if you put him first, he will give you all that you need. Can I prove it to you? I hadn't done this in a long time. All you got to do is go to the alphabets, A to Z, and you'll never run out of teaching and preaching and evangelizing about Jesus. Can I do it? A. Preach him as the almighty God. B, preach him as the bishop of your soul. C, preach him as the captain of your salvation. D, preach him as a definite death destroyer. Preach him as E, the eternal one. Preach him as F, father of the faithful. Preach him as G, the great God almighty. Preach him as H, the holy one of Israel. Teach him as I, the image of the invisible God. Preach him as J, Jesus Christ. K, King of Kings. L, Lord of Lords. Preach him as M, the mighty God. Preach him as N, the Nazarene. And you won't run out, O, the only wise God. P, preach him as the Prince of Peace. Q, I'm not stuck, he's the quencher of my thirst. R, he's a resurrection and the light. Preach him as S, the savior of the world. Yeah. Preach him as T, the true vine. Yeah. Preach him as U, the unspeakable gift. Yeah. Preach him as W, wonderful. Now X, you think you got, no, he's the eximus of God's love. He's Yahweh's son, and he's Zion praise. Remember that, and your ministry will grow and grow.
never liked to follow Dr. Maxwell. <clears throat> Ministers, it is my pleasure to present these Bibles to you. You have heard so much today. I want to preface this with, in the ministry we are taught to be selfless, to give. But there is going to come a time in your life that you will find selfishness is a good thing. And I know that sounds hard coming from a preacher, but I, I'm going to prove it in 60 seconds. Selfishness for a preacher can be a very good thing. David proved it when he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Now, I don't know what he does for the rest of it, but he restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, yeah. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. You know the rest. Beverly. And Carleen, throughout history, pastors and ministers have picked up this book, the hymnal. In this book, you will find joy, happiness, and when people are sick, you will find something for being sick. So we want you to take this book and make it a part of your daily life. When you, are re when you are preparing your sermon, pick up the book. When you are s joyful, pick up the book. When you are sad, pick up the book. It will be a blessing to you. Amen. This time we going to prepare for the laying on of hands ceremony. We're going to ask all of our ordained clergy members to prepare your hearts to join us. We, uh, Pastor Burke is bringing some chairs. Uh, please, ma'am, please, sir, uh, keep your mask on as we prepare to come around and get as close as we can yet uh, being as safe as possible. We're going to ask that you turn the chairs around to face the pulpit. Now, you may wonder why. 
because your work is inside the church. Huh? If you were on your way out of the church, it'd be something different. But you are working in the church under the leadership of your pastors. So we ask you to come now, if you would, and take your seats. Amen. We ask all of our ordained clergy members to join us. already or trying to do our best to fulfill your biblical command being considerate as we examine one another yeah. understanding that we should not lay hands suddenly on any man or woman yeah. or we are mindful that this ministry is not so much a single or solitary ministry none of us are in it for ourselves or by Ourselves. Help us, God, to learn the lesson of that great prophet, Elijah, who thought that he was the only one left that had not bowed the knees to Baal. Well, you let him know that you have others also in the vineyard. You have other servants scattered all about this land called earth. And God, so as we come together to lay hands on these two servants, God, oh, you don't see them as women necessarily. You see them as servants that you have anointed God, that you have appointed God, and now that you have ordained God. And so we gather in this Baptist church called Beacon Light, God. We pray that heaven's light will shine bright on them, oh God. And when that light shines from heaven, it will expose our inabilities, it will expose our flaws and our failures, but it also will show us who you are, the great God, uh, you don't call the qualified, you qualify those that are called. So we lay hands on them, God, in the name of Jesus. We lay hands on them, God, by the authority of your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we pray that the Holy Spirit will fall fresh on them. We pray that they will know what it means to carry and wait on their help to come. Even in the midst of preparation and deliverance, believing that their help can come. Well, you can stir up your spirit in them. So I pray, God, for the assignment that you've given them. I pray for Mount Moriah. I pray for that congregation, God. I pray for that pastor that you have assigned them. Likewise, here at Beacon Light, God, as we lay hands on these, your two servants, we thank you that you first laid your hands on us. And, oh, God, so confer that power from on high through us to them like you did your servant Moses. You took some of that spirit on him and put it on them. And we do likewise, God. We pray that you will be pleased, God, with our efforts. Help us to know, God, it's not a feeling that you get where you feel like you are ordained. It's a fact that they have to understand that they have been ordained by you, God. So we thank you for these servants. We commit and commend them into your care and keep you know how to ordain them. You know how to bless them. You know how to keep them. You certainly know how to direct them. It's in the matchless name of Jesus who is the Christ. We are obedient to your command. Amen. 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 Amen.
will solemnly and publicly set apart and ordain you for the work of the gospel ministry by authority and order of the New Hope Missionary Baptist Association on the first day of August, 2021. I present this to you, my sister, and I, as I present this to you, I just want to let you know that God has given you all the time, and this is just so you can show the people. This time we, as we continue to move in our, our service, we have a place where we inserted special presentations. And so before we ask Pastor Burt to come and those of you who have desires to share with our new ministers of the gospel, I have a letter that I need to read this afternoon, and it says, dear, dear, My dear sister, I greet you in the matchless name of he who orders our steps, Jesus the Christ. Today is a special day in your life and ministry. This call to preach the good news of Jesus the Christ is both awesome and humbling. You, my sister, have already acknowledged and accepted your call, and you must always remember he who called you. The words of God instruct us to study, to show thyself approved. My prayer is that you continuously honor he who called you, and, you, and that you fervently study his word. This ministry journey which you have embarked upon is not about you. It is about the one who called you. You have, through your dedication to preparation and willingness to move forward in the work of ministry, confirmed your obedience to the call. Therefore, today, you make the transition from minister to Reverend, Reverend Graham. As you move forward, celebrate. Today is your day of hallelujah. Tomorrow, the work of ministry begins anew. My dear sister, no matter what tomorrow brings, remember that he who called you, he who anointed you, and he who orders your steps is the one who controls all of your tomorrows. Therefore, Stand firm in these words recorded in Philippians 1 and 5. Being confident of this, that he who begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus to Christ. Congratulations, Reverend Beverly Graham. Stay faithful, stay focused, stay the course. The best is yet to come. Your sister in ministry, Reverend Dr. Barbara R. Conyers, 
co-pastor emeritus, Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Reverend Graham, she wasn't able to be here, but she sent me this and asked me to make sure that I read it to you today. Amen. Amen. Okay. Pastor Burke is going to come now with a presentation, and then following him, anyone else that has any presentations uh, for these new reverends, uh, then you can certainly follow Pastor Burke. Thank you, Pastor Armstead. I have a present for Minister Phillips. We believe that every reverend needs to have a robe because this journey will take you beyond the walls of Beacon Light. And we want you to be prepared and well clothed. When you were catechized, I asked you to find a robe that you think you like and will look good on you. We didn't think it would be a year before we could give it to you. <laughs> so it's my pleasure on behalf of Beacon Light to present you with this robe. And we know that you will wear it as a strong representative of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Wherever you go, we will always be with you and praying for you. So God bless you. You never know where you're going to end up. You never know where you're going to be. But you need to be prepared for the situation. So therefore, we present this robe to you with love from your Beacon Light Missionary Baptist Church family. Okay, at this time, we're going to give way that we might have remarks from First Reverend Carlene Phillips, following that, Reverend Beverly Graham. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Greetings, everyone. It is in awe that I stand here, in awe of God, not of man. I am really happy to see all of you here, but I do give honor to God who has been, oh, oh, look at, um, oh, okay, I'm gonna cry, okay. It's good to see everybody. God has been my guide. He has kept me up until this point. He has guided my footsteps and I'm so grateful, I'm so thankful this is such an honor, and it is with thanks, again, that I stand here. I want to thank everyone. I want to thank the council members. I want to say I want to thank Lindsay, and I can say it because we work together. But Pastor, <laughs> thank you for being here. Thank you to the council members. I want to thank my pastor, Pastor Burke, who has been more than my pastor. He's been my mentor and my friend. He's been somebody who has prayed with me and for me through the journey. I'm so thankful for him. Thankful to the Beacon Light family. It's been my pleasure to walk with you and to serve you, and I'm gonna continue this journey as a minister of God and as a servant of God. Thank you to my family. I'm really happy to have my daughter here today, Kamaria, thank you for coming, my son, was coming from New York, but he had some issues with his flight. But I'm just thankful for all who are here. And again, I move forward in God and just committed 
to take in the word wherever he leads me and guides me. Thank you. Oh, 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 I have to say, Dr. Maxwell, where are you? Oh, Dr. Maxwell, thank you so much for being here. He is one of my mentors, not just a mentor, but he, he taught me for several years in the master's program, the doctorate program, and he didn't just teach. He just, man, he just deposited stuff in you. He, he, he planted things that I had never heard, never understood before. He helped us in the class to see things in a different light. And I thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you. To God be the glory. I knew I wouldn't remember everything that I was supposed to say like Reverend Phillips, so I brought a, some notes with me, amen. But I just will not let this moment pass without, first of all, giving all honor, praise, and glory to God for what he has done and what he continues to do through us, in us, and most of all, for us, amen. A special thank you to the ordaining council of the New Hope Missionary Baptist Association who played a vital role in what you are witnessing here today. They were the ones that we had to sit before and prove that we had studied to show ourselves approved, workmen that need not be ashamed to rightly divide the word of God. I wanna say thank you to Pastor Clarence Burke and Beacon Light for hosting this occasion for making us feel as safe as we can in this environment to Pastor Atkins for such a wonderful message that really pricked our hearts and that word was not only for us but it was for you all too because we have to learn how to wait on God and I thank Pastor Lindsay for that he was on the ordaining council as well and to uh, Reverend Thorpe who has served today I thank all of those who participated on the program, no matter what role you played, amen? And I can't forget to thank Sister Jamie, who's my best friend. You met her when you came in, and her, her creativity is sprinkled throughout your order of service that you have today. She helped to put that together. She also put together the guest book that you will have an opportunity to sign, hopefully, for me and Reverend Phillips. There's one for both families, both church families, everybody to sign. So please leave us some, some, some um, uh, comments in the guest book. Thank you. Thank you to my family. Some have come today, but some, of course, were not able to be here with us today. Um, I'm especially thankful for my dad, who's sitting right there. Raise your hand, Papa. Amen. Amen. This has been a journey for my dad as well because he was so excited when I first told him a couple of years ago, as Pastor Burke alluded to, we've been waiting for this day, but my dad was so excited when he heard it. Sometimes when I would teach and I would preach, he would say, was that your ordination? And I'll say, no, Papa, that wasn't it yet. We got a little, a little way to go. But my dad, if God spares his life, will be 86 years old on September the 2nd. And I just thank God for him. I would be remiss not to mention my special friends that, I've, that I, are here today um, that carved out time to be here with me. I'm going to, uh, first of all, let you know that I don't take you for granted. Pastor, Pastor um, Mac Battle and First Lady Battle came all the way from Rocky Mount to be here today. Um, I've got family from as far away as Virginia Beach that's here today. And I just thank all of my family. I thank my church family who has shown up to support me. Um, and I can't forget the members of the Quiet Stream Bible Study Ministry. This is a group of about 18 people who meet faithfully every week to support the Bible study that God has given me. He gave me that even before I accepted the call to preach. Um, I was led by the Spirit to start a Bible study for seniors because 
they're at a stage in their lives where they don't go to church as often as they would like to. So the Lord said, if they can't come to church, you take church to them. So I started that ministry about six years ago, and God has blessed it both numerically and spiritually. And I thank them for their support. There's some here today. Others are watching uh, on live stream. Amen. And last but certainly not least, I cannot leave this podium without thanking my pastor, Amen. Reverend Norman T. Umstead, Jr. When I tell you that this man of God has been a mentor, an advisor, a leader, a confidant, a friend, and a brother, if I had the time, I would tell you how he came to be all of this in my life, but that's another story for another time. But just know that Pastor Umstead has been more than a covering for me. He has picked up where my former pastor left off, and he has guided me and nurtured me and trained me and taught me to where I am today. And I have to say thank you, Pastor Umstead. I love you for that. And now I say to all who are assembled here, and again to those who are watching by webinar today, God opens another chapter in the life that he preordained for me when he formed me in my mother's womb. And I ask your prayers and your support as I accept this challenge of taking on more responsibility and more accountability, amen? Because at the end of the day, it's God whom I want to please. I want to represent him well in the earth. I want to point the way to those who are lost being a beacon of light, the light of the world and the salt of the earth that God has called us to be. Amen. So I ask your prayers. I thank you for your support. And I say to God, be the glory for the things he has done. Grace and peace to all of you. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Phillips and Reverend Graham. And we Pray God's blessings upon you as you go forth, doing what the Lord has called each of you to do. Know again, he who called you has already equipped you for the work that lies ahead of you. I want to say again, thank you to all of you who came out this afternoon to support these two preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, not our gospel, not their gospel but the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Pastor Burke and the Beacon Light Church family for making this a possibility. As you heard it said, and we've, we've heard over the last 16, 18 months how, 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 how we have labored just to be able to even get this close to one another and to be able to share um, as, as we would in ministry, you know, Hebrews 10, 25 says, Forsake not thyself with the assembly of others as the manner of some ills. But in this day and age, we try to stay as far away from each other as we can. But still, we give God praise for it all. So we say, we say thank you to Beacon Light for making this, this day a possibility. Thank you to Pastor Atkins. What now? Now what? Now what? Now what are we going to do? Amen. We're going to wait on the Lord. We're going to be of good courage. huh? We're going to wait and be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on who? The Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to say thank you to my dear friend, my sister Mary Moffitt, for coming and, and rendering the music. Another good friend, my my little brother in ministry, Reverend Ned Thorpe, to Dr. Maxwell, Dr. Birch, Reverend Tapp, thank you for participating on this program. Thank you so much for all that you've done. Continue to lift these preachers in prayer because believe it or not, the hell hounds are uh, stirring up. They're they, they making tracks. Hmm? They're kicking up dust. They're getting ready to attack. Amen. 
But greater is he who is in you than he who is in this world. Huh? Amen. Pastor Brooke, do you have anything before we close? Thank you again, Pastor Brittany. Y'all heard it from the pastor. Y'all don't have to go home, but y'all got to get up out of here. <laughs> Amen. And, you, and you're going to do it orderly. huh? Now, y'all know how we are at church. We feel like we can just come in and do like we want to, when we want to, like we want to, regardless of what anybody say. But we're going to do it right. Amen. Amen. We're going to listen, and we're going to be obedient. Amen. Amen. Let us rest to our feet. Again, I want to say thank you to Pastor Atkins. A happy birthday to your pastor. May God bless you. May heaven keep you. Amen. Now unto him that's able to keep us from falling, to present us faultless before his presence in glory, to the only wise God our Savior, be dominion and majesty, henceforth now and forevermore. And the redeemed of God says amen, amen, amen. 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 Go in peace. Stay safe that you might stay well. Amen.